Am I the jerk for demanding my sibling gets rid of their cat? While at work, my sister, a 25-year-old female, found a basically skeletal, 6-8 to eight month old kitten. My sister brought her home, and we were thankfully able to save her. We found out that the cat was pregnant, and was going to give birth. Almost a month after this, the cat, Monkey, gave birth. After this happened, everything went wrong. Over the next few months, Monkey became extremely aggressive towards our other cats and actively chased them and harmed them. My sister brushed it off and said, It's not that big of a deal, the cats fight all the time. Our other cats, for the most part, play fight. They are very gentle, and if it goes too far and one of them does not want to participate, we break it up. The only one who is a bit more difficult is my orange cat, Peaches, who occasionally hisses and swipes. Monkey went after my other cat, Chester. Chester is my baby boy and is also my step-grandmother's cat. She is in a nursing home. I promised I would take great care of him and keep him safe, since all of her other pets sadly had to be rehomed as well. Chester means a lot to our family and is widely regarded as the whole house cat. He is very gentle. To give you an example, a grasshopper got inside the house one day and spooked him because it jumped too high. I was sitting in the living room talking to my mother about how work was when Monkey saw him. She got a hold of Chester and began attacking him. She chased him up the wall, and when I was able to grab her, my poor baby went and hid under our dining room table until I threw Monkey outside. My mother went and checked on him while I went and woke my sister. She immediately went to Monkey's defense and said that he must have done something to provoke her. She then slammed her door and went back to bed. Days later the same exact thing happened except I could not find Chester afterward. I was not too concerned since he is an indoor-outdoor cat. He knows his way home and never goes beyond our yard, but after a few days, he did not come home. My sweet boy, who cannot even fight a grasshopper, was gone. My whole family was upset with my sister over this, demanding she get rid of the cat. She said that it was her cat, and since Peaches is aggressive, why haven't we gotten rid of her? Thankfully today, after a full month of missing, Chester was found. He is safe and resting at my feet while I type this. I tried to explain to her that Monkey would thrive in a one-cat home, and it is not like our shelter is a kill shelter. She is a sweet cat, and I do enjoy Monkey's company from time to time, but other than that, I see no point in keeping her here. My sister has grown attached to her, but Monkey is stressed and is taking it out on our other cats. Am I the asshole for telling my sister to get rid of her cat? It's worth looking into talking to a veterinarian or ethologist since Monkey's sudden change in behavior could be tied to her giving birth at such a young age. It might be helpful to have a trained professional come to your home, observe the cat's interactions, and offer some advice and solutions. In the meantime, consider giving Monkey a room to herself to reduce stress and keep her separated from the other cats. This way, she can feel more secure and it might ease some of the tension everyone is feeling. Am I the jerk for not inviting a close friend to my graduation party? Hi everyone, here's the whole long story. My daughter graduated from high school this past month, and we talked her into having a small family party. My mother passed away a few months ago, and I really do not talk to a lot of my family anymore, because we all got busy with our lives. We all used to be extremely close. We only see each other at funerals now, and we all said we need to see each other during something happy instead of sad. I haven't invited my family to anything in a lot of years mainly because I haven't had a big enough party worth inviting anyone to. At the funeral, I asked everyone if I had a graduation party for my daughter, would they like to come? Everyone said yes in some way or the other, and most said we definitely need this as a family. I told them the reason I'm asking before sending out invites is so I know where to have the party. I sincerely tried to ask who would think they would come, so I could try and plan to accommodate everyone. A few weeks later I posted on Facebook for everyone to let me know again who would be willing to come just because I know how emotional funerals get and people agree to things they don't mean. Again I got multiple yes replies, I'm down, wouldn't miss it. I planned the party, rented a room at a center, ground level with air conditioning. I accommodated everyone I could think of. I then sent out the invitation almost three weeks before the party with an RSVP date one week before the party. Only two people responded with, I'll be there and I wouldn't miss it. Everyone else in my family either didn't respond or just liked the picture. I even sent out mailed invites to some older family members just in case. I know some people just don't RSVP so I kind of left it at that. One day before the RSVP deadline, I sent another post asking everyone that was coming to confirm that they are, and how many people they were bringing so I know how much food I need. No one replied to that. Not one single one of my family members showed up, even the two who said they would be there when I sent the invites. I understand completely if something comes up and you cannot come, but the complete rudeness and lack of any type of etiquette has royally pissed me off. I went off on a few of them and told them that's exactly why I stopped talking to all of you, among other things. I made the decision to not attend any family events in the future ever. I will only attend my aunt's or uncle's funerals when they pass out of respect for my mother. But that's it, no one else. My little one says I'm overreacting, and my cousin says I'm being a bee and childish. The fact is, I wouldn't have needed to rent a room to accommodate the people who came to her party. I could have had it at a park and saved money. 
I needed the room only if my family members were going to be in attendance. Then, because I had no idea if anyone was actually coming or not, I had to still make sure there was enough food to feed people if they did come. So I'm just wondering, am I the asshole in overreacting? It's definitely sad that no one made an effort to attend or even communicate, especially considering the recent loss of a loved one. The cost and effort put into renting a space for the event make it even more frustrating. Plus, it's disheartening to think about how that must make your daughter feel when no one from the family shows up. You are not in the wrong here at all, and it's completely understandable to feel disappointed and frustrated in this situation. Am I the jerk for telling my sibling that they shouldn't say I'm the favorite child because our parents remind them more of their grades? My brother Ollie, who is 16 years old, has always called me, who is 15 years old, the favorite child of our parents. He sometimes says that I do things to get them to like me more than him. When he says things like this, I brush it off and apologize for our parents' actions, but I feel upset whenever he says this because it makes me feel guilty for doing things that could make me be seen in a more positive light. Our parents constantly remind both of us about the importance of school and how we have to do well in school, or else our futures won't be happy ones. Most of the things they tell us about or lecture us on are related to our grades and schoolwork. My father has some trauma from his own past about being the eldest child in his family and having a bad childhood. He sometimes projects this onto Ale. I can understand how this hurts Oli, and I always try to be there for him when he needs to talk about it. My mother, on the other hand, always tries to help Oli with his schoolwork and staying on track with dates and assignments, which he has asked her to do. She never gets upset at him for his bad grades and even lies to our father so he doesn't know about Oli's low failing grades. This problem came up a few days ago when we were hanging out in his room, and our mother walked in to check on us and remind Oli about any schoolwork or missing assignments he has to do. He lied to her, saying he got everything finished, and that it was fine. He seemed annoyed at our mother for asking him about it, and more annoyed when she didn't ask me about my schoolwork. After she left, I asked him why he seemed annoyed, as he had asked her to remind him about his school. Oli said that, even though he did ask her, he was annoyed that she reminded him all the time. She only does this because he is failing one of his classes, and she didn't remind me. I told him that she only reminded him because he had asked her to, and I never asked her to remind me. Nor did I need her to remind me because I get all of my work for my class turned in on time. He brushed off what I said, claiming it was only because I was the favorite child of our parents and that they were more strict with him than with me. I told him that he shouldn't just say that I don't get reminded of school as much because he thinks I'm the favorite child. It made me upset when he says this because it feels like he diminishes the work I put into my studies just because I don't get reminded as often about schoolwork by our parents. I could tell what I said upset him because he told me to get out of his room. He said that I wouldn't understand what he's saying because he's the eldest and I'm just the youngest favorite child. Things have gone back to normal, but I don't know if I'm the one at fault for saying he shouldn't always claim I'm the favorite child just because I get lectured less about grades from our parents. You haven't done anything wrong. It sounds like you put in the effort, and he is forgetful or doesn't complete his assignments. It's not favoritism, it's just a reflection of your different work habits. Your parents' reminders are based on his specific needs, not because you are the golden child. Am I the jerk for threatening to kick out my friend for disrespecting my apartment? I, a 27-year-old male, was holding a get-together with some of my old college friends to celebrate the 4th of July. It was me and my three other friends, Tom, a 24-year-old male, Rick, a 23-year-old male, and Jason, a 24-year-old male. I just recently bought an apartment and am currently working on fixing it up. It needs some touch-up here and there, like painting the walls and filling up old nail holes left behind from shelves and paintings. Other small things were left behind from the previous owner. I got a couple of small projects done, but I want to take my time and make everything look perfect. This all started when I left with Tom and Jason to go to the store to pick up some food for later. I have known Rick for a couple of years now and thought nothing of leaving him behind. When I got back to the apartment, Rick was very apologetic and led me over to a toilet paper holder that was now on the ground. To say I was disappointed was an understatement. I had some choice words for Rick that I'm not too proud of myself for saying. Rick apologized a bunch, and I eventually cooled off. When I did finally cool off, Tom decided to bring up that he had seen the holder dangling in the wall on an earlier visit. I told Tom I didn't want to hear any of it, that he was making excuses for Rick, and that Rick should be held accountable for something he broke. Even if the holder was slightly broken before, Rick was the one who fully broke it. Tom told me that didn't matter since I was fixing everything up anyways. I told him again that I didn't want to hear it right now, and that he was being very disrespectful to my apartment that I was letting the three of them sleep in. Later in the day when I finally had a chance to think about everything, I decided to apologize to Rick since he seemed genuinely sorry for breaking the holder. Rick accepted my apology, but then Tom doubled down and said that Rick didn't break it. I told Tom that he was on thin ice and that was that. The rest of the night went fine. The next morning, I felt bad for originally getting mad at Rick, so I decided to apologize to him again. I thought I was giving Tom an opportunity to apologize for disrespecting both me and my apartment, but he couldn't get over himself. He said he did nothing wrong and wouldn't apologize. I told him to get out of my apartment. 
After some back and forth, he eventually apologized, and that was the end of it. I let the three of them stay at my place, and they not only broke something but were disrespectful about it. I thought I warned Tom plenty to back off, but he just wouldn't let it go. Jason even told Tom that he was making excuses for Rick. I don't know why Tom had to make this a bigger deal than it was, and why he had to join the ordeal. I thought my actions were justified at the time, but after talking it out with a couple of other friends, I'm not too sure. You overreacted and were in jerk to Rick, which is why you apologized twice. Tom called you out for being in jerk, and it's unclear why he would need to apologize for that. The situation seems to have been blown out of proportion. It's hard to imagine how friends are treated on a daily basis with reactions like these. Would I be the asshole if I moved out of my dad's house because of my stepmom? I, 18-year-old male, live with my dad, 50-year-old male, my stepmom, 47-year-old female, and my two younger siblings, 6-year-old male and 3-year-old female. We are all from a South American country. Initially, I moved with them to the USA, and one year later, we all moved to a European country. My dad's job paid for some language classes for me twice per week, but I was thrown into school on my own and expected to do great with basically no knowledge of the language. This created many conflicts between us because I couldn't understand the classes and ended up having to repeat a school year. Our family life is really turbulent because of me and my stepmom. She is very controlling. She sometimes hits my siblings and screams at them and always finds something to be mad about. She is what I'd call a clean freak. In my first years living with her, she would randomly get into my room, inspect the cleanliness, and then not let me go out or do certain things based on her opinion. I help around the house with chores. Before, I didn't have a curfew and my dad didn't have any problems with me seeing friends. Because of school stuff, she started controlling my free time. Now, she suddenly has a problem with my friends using our couch. They were gone for a weekend, and I watched a movie with some friends at home, nothing crazy. Now that she is back she says the pillows smell terrible and that all my friends stink. She blames it on them being European and us being Latinos. She says they're not allowed to use our couch and need to sit on the floor if they come here. She took away the key of my door because she didn't like the smell of the shirt I was wearing. It was my boyfriend's shirt and she says he doesn't know how to wash clothes. I am transgender and when I got a boyfriend, she asked me during a fight if we had anal sex or vaginal sex. She said it was hypocritical of me to have vaginal sex while identifying as a boy. She often brings up that she has opinions on my gender and always says, but inside you're a girl so, she says that I'm the reason for her having problems with my dad. She wants to forbid me from eating in my room because I don't deserve the privilege. She literally searches my room expecting to find my boyfriend hiding there. She says that my boyfriend will leave me because I repeated a school year. I had to hide the fact that I was having language classes for a while because she was jealous that she had to work and couldn't study the language. My dad and the kids are the only ones fluent in it. My dad says she is just a bit of a clean freak and has a strong personality. Nowadays she is in a language school and working part time. Due to all this I've been trying to find a way out of the house, but I don't know if her behavior is actually okay or not. Am I the asshole for wanting to move out? I think you are not in the wrong here, and it's entirely reasonable to want to move out given the circumstances. The stepmother's behavior is not okay at all, and it's a toxic environment. If you have the funds and the ability to do so, moving out would be the best choice for your mental and emotional well-being. Your father is also at fault for not standing up for you, making it clear that staying in that household is not in your best interest. Am I the jerk for telling my partner no? Recently, I, a 36-year-old male, have grown increasingly concerned about my wife's relationship with her male friend, who is nearly my age. My wife and I have been together for four years and married for two. I trust her completely but something about her friendship with this man, whom she met while bartending, is bothering me. He was a regular patron at her bar. He has a bad boy image and constantly gets into trouble with girls. He uses drugs like cocaine, mushrooms, and ecstasy. He has a troubled past, including a felony conviction of domestic abuse and losing custody of his child. What really concerns me is the way they look at each other. It's a look that suggests an emotional connection. She doesn't look at anyone else like that, except me. Sometimes it feels like I'm watching a couple, and I'm just an outsider. I've talked to her about this, and she insists she has no feelings for him. But I can't shake the feeling that there's something more. It's been eating at me for a while. Once, he brought cocaine to our annual Halloween party. While I was engaged in conversations with others, my wife and he, along with some others, did a few lines of cocaine. I'm not a fan of drugs other than marijuana, and my wife knows this. She snuck behind my back to do it, and I noticed the change in their behavior immediately. When I confronted her, she admitted to it. It wasn't the cocaine that bothered me as much as the sneaking around behind my back. Another incident happened when she was bartending late one night. He was there after closing and I was texting her but got no response. My mother-in-law went to check on her and found them inside. She had to knock on the window for a while before my wife came out. In her defense, my wife often has someone with her for safety when closing up, which I support. But the lack of response and the odd way she answered the door really shook me. She said they were talking about his drama with his father. I've never caught my wife in a lie, although I've seen her lie to others very convincingly, making it hard to discern. 
Now she's talking about this guy moving in with us temporarily to help with house projects. I work 10 hour shifts and she doesn't work, so they would be alone together at home for about 12 hours each day. While I trust her I feel uncomfortable about their dynamic and have learned to trust my gut instincts. If she had cheated with him that night at the bar, I would forgive her. It was early in our relationship. I feel no lack of love from her. Nothing has changed, no distance has developed between us. However, my instincts are on high alert. I'm not the type to say no, you can't do that or I don't like him as your friend but I feel uneasy. I have not done this with any other friends of hers, including her ex-husband. Am I the asshole to tell her she can't be friends with him? You are not in the wrong. It's your house as much as it is hers. If you don't feel comfortable with this dude, then say you don't feel comfortable. Plus he does drugs, and you probably don't want that in your house. Couples counseling might help with how to communicate your feelings better, since it seems like she's not listening right now. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.